Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News, where Warner Brothers continues to make headlines. And the biggest is that they've sent out a casting call for Batman Superman 2015 for an actress between the ages of 25 and 33 who must appear physically strong. And everyone, even the Hollywood, immediately went Wonder Woman. Even the agents who are sending in actresses to read for the role or to be considered for the role are thinking it's Wonder Woman. And Warner Brothers is uh, refusing to discuss it. That means they won't uh, confirm it, but they won't deny it either. However, I think they could just be trying to use this rumor in their favor. I think that they saw how the Ben Affleck announcement uh, worked in their fa uh, worked for them. Even the Batman Superman announcement at Comic Con was a big deal, and they really have been dominating the headlines impressively. And I think that Warner Brothers is playing a very fast and loose but aggressive PR game. Uh, they're certainly getting everyone's attention. We'll see what kind of product that results in. Uh, you know, I think casting and making business decisions purely for attention grabs isn't always the best bet, but, you know, we'll have to see how it plays out. Is it Wonder Woman, though? I'm not sure. Remember that rumor that came out right after Man of Steel was released, before everybody knew that Batman was going to be in it, that Supergirl would show up? So I think this could conceivably be Supergirl as well. Uh, they could totally go with the last son of Krypton storyline, but just change it to a, a, a daughter, and that's where uh, General Zod and Ursa in the comics, it's Feora in the films, but Zod and Ursa had a child in the Phantom Zone uh, who, came, who, who escaped and uh, it was named Christopher Kent. So it was, it was a pretty good story, uh, and so they could maybe do a variation of that for their Supergirl. Supergirl could, of course, come from anywhere. She doesn't have to be Kal-El's cousin because uh, not only did they change a lot of the way Krypton works uh, in terms of family, they have those birthing pods and everything, but of course, uh, the movies obviously are not paying attention to canon, particularly when it comes to Superman, you know, because of all the legal problems they've had with that character. They really are reinventing the wheel. Uh, so that's interesting. So it could be Supergirl. It could be Wonder Woman. If it is Wonder Woman, I think it's interesting that they were going to have a Justice League movie. Then they kind of went down to a world's finest film, which I thought was a good idea. And now they're going to a Trinity film, which I also think could be solid. I think it's going to be very hard to introduce two new characters, both a new Batman and a Wonder, a Wonder Woman for the first time uh, in the same film. Uh, so I'm nervous about that. But I think that they might just tease Wonder Woman, which could be interesting. However, I have to say, I think it, at some point, in some point quickly, she needs to be a full-fledged equal with Batman and Superman. I don't want her to become what they've done with Black Widow over in the Marvel Universe, where she's really a secondary character. I think that would be a shame. And if any female character or superhero in comics needs to be a main character, it's Wonder Woman. Uh, I also feel 25 is a bit young. I hope they go to, towards the older... Uh, the older end of the age scale that they're looking for, because she really needs to be a contemporary in every way, including, I think, age. And she's gonna, 25 is going to be much younger than uh, Henry Cavill. I think he's about, uh, I think he's actually around 30. Uh, and then also, you know, Ben Affleck obviously is in his 40s, I believe. So you want a Wonder Woman, I think, ideally, who is closer to Superman's age, I guess. I think 25 might make her seem a little bit more of a novice. And to go with the novice storyline, I think would, I mean, Wonder Woman might be new to man's world, but she has been fighting and practicing since birth on, on the mascara. So, I mean, I, I would be happy either way. I'd be happy with a Supergirl storyline or a Wonder Woman storyline. I, I hope that both are just would be handled respectfully and that they cast someone who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck in every department. All right, so that's the first uh, big headline. The second is that Warner Brothers has gotten another television show picked up. Of course, yesterday we discussed Gotham, which will be a Jim Gordon origin story, but now they're doing also Constantine over at NBC. I actually think Constantine is a great choice for television because it's very episodic in nature. Uh, Constantine, for those of you not familiar with the character, is like a con man, kind of, uh, you know, petty criminal who gets sucked into the world of um, the paranormal and, and becomes an investigator. He's also uh, from the UK, and I hope they keep that angle for the television show. Basically, he's a supernatural Sherlock Holmes to some degree, with an attitude, like a little cooler, a little more rough and tumble. Uh, so it would remind me of shows, I think, that have worked quite well on television, such as House, The Mentalist. Uh, there's definitely uh, a history there that shows that that kind of formula works very well in the medium. However, this also brings up the question, though, what about Justice League Dark, the movie that Guillermo del Toro was supposed to be working on? We heard quite a bit about it uh, before Pacific Rim came out. Warner Brothers and Guillermo del Toro were talking about it quite a bit. Uh, however, after Pacific Rim was a bit of a disappointment, uh, you know, both with audiences in the, in the States, stateside, and at the box office, uh, I know a lot of you liked it, but I think, you know, overall the American public did not enjoy it. But it did, it did well in China, obviously. Uh, it does have its fan base. But because of that not being as huge a hit, I think, as Warner Brothers expected, and also legendary part in company with them, uh, that might mean that Justice League Dark might be maybe backburnered or its fate up in the air 
you know, not quite sure what's going to happen, which is why they decided to move forward with the Constantine show. Uh, but as I said, I think it's a pretty good idea. Uh, but Warner Brothers needs to be careful about how they're dividing up their uh, DC Cinematic Universe, or just DC, I guess, uh, on-screen universe. Because now they'll have um, not only Arrow, but the Flash spinoff, but uh, Jim Gordon and Constantine all on television. And these are crucial characters to the movie properties that they have, they're have they working on. So I don't know if the characters can exist in both places. They're going to probably be finding out pretty soon if they keep up with this. Uh, I would probably think the Justice League Dark is probably on hold if they're doing Constantine, but I'm not quite sure what to make of the Flash. Uh, and also, I don't know, maybe actually when I think about it, having a Gordon show, a Jim Gordon show, might mean we're very far away from another Batman movie. They might just totally decide to go with the Justice League angle and uh, go right into Justice League from uh, Superman 2, basic, Man of Steel 2, basically Batman Superman. So that would be interesting. What do you think? Do you think you want to take some time away from the Batman universe and stick with Justice League? Uh, We'll see. All right, so the third story is that the Oscar race continues to uh, have people drop out. Uh, as it was reported uh, last week or so, Grace of Monaco has moved to 2014, and now it was also announced yesterday that Foxcatcher, uh, the story was, uh, the film with Steve Carell and uh, Channing Tatum and Mark Ruffalo about uh, the Jan DeBont murder, uh, has been also pushed to 2014. Uh, now, the, what they're saying, and also, as I said, Wolf of Wall Street might come out in December, and that might be pushed as well. Uh, for not as, as Shutter Island was pushed, but also, uh, as I, I read yesterday and was reminded, Great Gatsby was also pushed. So DiCaprio's movies keep getting pushed. He keeps thinking he has Oscar contenders, and they keep ending up, uh, the studio doesn't agree with him. But basically, while these all three movies are saying, oh, well, you know, they're not quite ready, they need to be worked on a little bit, you know, we really want to get them just right, the bottom line is that the Oscar race is just too competitive. So many films have already pulled out front, particularly 12 Years a Slave, that I think that these movies just feel that, you know, we're better off uh, cutting and running, and to, we'll just take our chances in 2014. Uh, I think, you know, with all the, I think Wolf of Wall Street would make a mistake to do that. I think its trailer has already come out. Uh, I think it was silly to release a Fox Catcher trailer yesterday as well. If they're going to push that film to 2014, maybe it'll be early 2014. But, uh, you know, once I think your trailer's out, you're kind of stuck. Uh, but, you know, it, it didn't hurt Gatsby, I guess, and it, it didn't hurt Shutter Island either. Uh, I didn't like Shutter Island as much as Great Gatsby. But we'll see. I think these movies are a little bit chicken because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to gel. So those are the three stories for the day. Uh, the viewer question is from Josette, or her as her uh, YouTube handle is uh, Cutie Lamar, Cutie Lamer, sorry. Uh, and so she says, hey Grace, I hope you had fun vacation with your grandma. I did, thank you for asking, Josette. So I was curious on your thoughts on Disney's The Little Mermaid second screen live, where select uh, theaters will show The Little Mermaid and you interact with the film on your iPad with an exclusive app. Some of you might have seen this ad uh, in theaters. Uh, what do you think? I personally think it's a stupid idea, especially considering they give 3D re-release the boot for this. Uh, that's true, but I think that uh, this is obviously cheaper than a 3D re-release, so this is really just Disney hedging its bets, I'm afraid. Uh, and do you think uh, iPads and movie theaters will catch on to create a new type of movie-going experience? Interesting question, Josette. As you might recall, a couple months ago I talked about the fact that AMC was playing around with the idea of having uh, texting okay th uh, screenings of films. Basically there would be certain showings where uh, that you were encouraged to text and use social media while the movie was on to talk about your experience. And they were like, oh, the kids will love it. Uh, which I thought was kind of, uh, nobody likes having a, uh, a TV screen on or a bright light come on during the movie. And the only people who like that are people who don't particularly like movies very much. I often find it's people who are just killing time or were dragged there by somebody else or like a group of teenagers who, again, are just killing time and bored and so they decide to uh, go on their phone. I really dislike it. I agree with you. Uh, just that I think it's extremely disrespectful of other moviegoers. Uh, and even if, I mean, I think that even if there was a special screening dedicated to that, it would still take up uh, a theater and a screening time that I think people who are more interested in the film could could enjoy. Uh, I mean, I think it would be very weird to have people coming out of a paying experience that weren't really engaged in the film because they were so busy uh, commenting on it online. Uh, but as far as this interactive experience goes with this particular film, I'm not sure how that will play out. I'm curious to think, hear what everybody else uh, says. Are any of you planning to go to that? Uh, are you planning to see this screening? I mean, it might be an interesting way if you've already seen the film. But again, I think looking up and down and uh, n not being able to be fully engaged, I think, would be a mistake. Uh, I, as, for the two, as for the 3D conversion, I don't think 3D works so well with 2D animation. I thought The Lion King in 3D didn't work out so well. Uh, it caused me to skip Beauty and the Beast 3D because of that. 
uh, I'm actually I'm not I don't remember which one came out first. I think it was Lion King 3D came out first. But I thought Finding Nemo 3D was one of the best theater going experiences I've ever had. And I also thought the Wizard of Oz in 3D worked out quite well. Uh, the clarity and um, the impression the film makes on you is, is really surprising. You wouldn't expect that to be a side effect of the 3D conversion when done well. So, but you know what? I think The Little Mermaid in 3D would have made much more money than this. This is really just kind of testing the waters for a new experience. Uh, kind of like this with the sing-alongs. I believe this is also a sing-along though. Uh, and just trying to rev up interest in the DVD that's coming out. But uh, we'll see what happens. I think movie theaters are desperate to make sure people come to the theater. And if uh, making people blog while they're watching is one way to do it, they'll try it. So, but we'll see. I'd like to know everybody else's thoughts on this as well, uh, in addition to Josette's. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, and let me know what you'd like to see covered on Monday and any questions you might have. Thanks for watching. Bye.